14 years ago, the land on 41st and Alameda, known as the South Central Farm, was given to the community as a form of mitigation right after the 1992 riots. Three years ago, we found ourselves fighting for that. In homenaje a todos los pueblos del mundo, pueblo trabajador. Soy del pueblo. Yo canto porque el presente When I owned the land, it was improved with older uh, warehouse buildings. The city took the land for me in eminent domain, and and. Um, thereafter, some, sometime thereafter, demolish the buildings. It was bought to build a trash incinerator here, and the community activists fought it. It deserved to be a trash to energy plan. I mean, that would have been great for the city of LA, you know, instead of burning oil or something else. To take all our trash and burn it and create electricity for the city, I thought it was a wonderful use. Kind of just laid dormant here, and then the riots happened, and they were trying to find ways to, like, mitigate the situation, trying to make it um, more community programs in the area. So the food bank, which is right across the street, said, well, let's build uh, some kind of community garden. Hola, como estas? Good, is that? <laughs> Bien. They invited the community to come in and clean it up. It was full of like trash, like old tires, refrigerators. So they came in, they brought in dirt, they got sponsorship from different organizations and corporations. Y aquí estamos, no nos vamos. Aquí estamos, no nos vamos. Gracias. So that's kind of the phrase that you'll hear every farmer say. Well, it means, um, <laughs> aquí estamos y no nos vamos means we're here yeah. and yeah. we're staying here. Nice. Okay. <laughs> They're actually subsidizing their food. When they were invited here to qualify to have a plot of land here, you have to meet certain low income requirements, basically to meet um, welfare federal standards. And so the, instead of taking welfare, these families came in and decided that they were going to grow their own food for their family. So we have families that are growing serious food here. Mature fruit trees all over this place, I mean hundreds of fruit trees. It's just so incredibly fruitful here and beautiful and this place is worth saving. It's an example of what we should all uh, every city should have a farm in, in the heart of it like this. 350 families have been growing food in this community for themselves and the community around. And this is what it's all about, to be able to have a place where you could work, play, pray. In the God of life, who gives us a land, amen. When I was here the other night, many people of Spanish, uh, who speak Spanish, but they are Indian. And I asked them all to give a tobacco offering to the tree, and they did. I think the Creator, when he saw that, he said, now the power will go. Now the power will work. Getting ready right now and being prepared for the potential of them coming in and also being prepared for us having a miracle and saving the farm. It's, a, it's also a medicine garden. A lot of people grow a lot of herbs that are medicinal, a lot of plants. Um, a lot of people here don't have health care. This one here is Rula. It's got a really strong odor and it, it, they say it's good for muscle aches. They'll mix it with alcohol and put it where it hurts. The kids usually put people on tours. Um, they know where all these plants are. And like one of them, they had a cut because they fell off a bike they were riding. And they ran over to the aloe tree and they just started putting it on. Peaches. Organic peaches. Oh my gosh. Good? It's like perfect. Yeah. It's the perfect, perfectly ripe, isn't yeah. it? You gotta have one of these. Yeah. Thanks. Mm. If you 
have chocolate mint in the stores, the kind they leave in your pillow at a hotel. This one is the plant version. Pineapple mint? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. They all taste really good. Leaves might be a little dirty, but I don't use pesticides, so. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. That's delicious. There's a lot of cactus here. It's very, very important in like the Mesoamerican diet to eat lots and lots of nopales or cactus. The plans for the property, it sounds like it's going to be to build another warehouse. And warehouses command high rents. You know, a group of people doing what I would call basically seem to be doing weekend gardening uh, on little plots of land. Well, I, I have walked it on occasion. You know, it wasn't like walking through Iowa and having pleasant conversations with everybody because I don't speak Spanish and, and, um, and they didn't speak English. They were growing things like cactus and um, various and sundry other plants. I've never seen a list of the various plants that were grown there, but the overwhelming impression you had as you walked through or drove around it was there was you know, a great deal of cactus type plants. Right after I bought it and they called me up and they asked for the 90 days to harvest their crops or 60 days to harvest their crops and then they would leave. Say thank you, quite frankly. I didn't expect to get sued. Whatever it takes, it's already an emergency to keep it alive, to keep it going. Every uh, available green patch has been sucked up, sucked out, and cemented over. And so this may be the very last one in certainly this community in South Central Los Angeles. Well, those of us in the tree are, are obviously going to be the hardest to get out, and we're not going to come down even if we're told to come down. We're going to make them remove us. Ten days ago, I felt guided in my prayers to begin a fast as a prayer for this garden. Most people don't know what it's like to go for more than a few hours hungry. And this, we're talking about a community who's facing losing a huge portion of their, their food source. The litigation is still going on. I think it's going to be uh, heard in July. If the guy suddenly woke up one day and wanted to give the property and perpetuity to the city, why well, he would be uh, probably on his way to canonization, which uh, uh, would be a good thing for everybody. <laughs> Here comes the train. You know, I did get calls from, what was her name? Some lady sitting in a tree. She was telling me how beautiful the people were. She was telling me a lot of these kind of um, heartwarming, you know, heartwarming rendition of what she was saying, which is okay to listen to. I listened to her. I told her I saw things a little different, I, you know, from a business standpoint. You go a half a block away in the heat of day, you feel that sun and the smog. As soon as you walk onto this farm, you, you, you know, it's life. It's, it's, it's community, it's, it's how our city should be. We should have these green spaces and workable. This is a working farm and it's not just a symbolic thing. It's not just about clean air. It's feeding families and good organic produce. Come on, give me a break. You know, on a 10 by 10 plot of land in your backyard, you can't support your family, you can't. Yeah, maybe you can have some tomatoes or some vegetables that you might not be able to buy at Ralph's. Jerry? I can't tell you how comfortable I'm feeling right now. Dude, you don't have like a lower branch, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm so happy to see what's going on here. And I learned a lot today and I plan on passing it along. Y'all have a good one. Well, we're going to court to contest the legality of the sale like to Mr. Horowitz when the city sold the land back to him in a backroom deal. Backroom deal. It was the only thing back room about it was nobody, including myself, was privy to the negotiations between the city's attorneys and the city's decision makers. I don't consider that a back room deal. I consider that, I would have wished it was, I wish it was open myself. I'd like to know what they were discussing. Maybe I would have got more money out of them. In 1994, it sold for 13 million and they sold it back to him for $5 million, so we feel it's a ripoff for the community. We've been going to city council for the past three years. We're on record um, inviting the council members to step up. If you agree that the eastern portion of District 9 needs more green space, that, selling the that the selling price was questionable, 
that poor people should be encouraged to be self-sufficient, that democracy allows for questioning laws and court decisions, why didn't you fight the court ruling on which you based the sale of the land to Horowitz? Our battle cannot be reduced to one of squatter rights versus property rights. Thank you. Thank you. This is a great opportunity so that the city could be an actual lead in terms of a model like the model we had here for all of the city of LA. When we talk about polluted air, we don't divide air into the ninth, the seventh, the sixth district. When we talk about growing trees, we grow trees so that everybody serves that purpose. Kind of rotate. But uh, Julie and I it's spend every night. Yeah, well, we said if you want, yourself. we'll get you up. I know. <laughs> hey, be very careful, okay. will you? So this is known as the popcorn tree and what it gives is it gives these little pods that look like uh, string beans but they twirl and inside of them are these little puffy white balls with a black seed in it and they're very sweet. So that's uh, I remember a lot of childhood memories of uh, going out and picking uh, wamuchiles and eating them. Part of the beauty of this place is the, the biodiversity that we have here and as you see and you've seen a whole bunch of plants that look probably very alien you may not have seen anywhere else. This one's for the shoeshine boy and the farmer in debt. Each string is barbed wire, each cord is a thread. People who are supporting it in this troubled time, it really has brought out the best of a diverse section of Los Angeles, you know, from the local working class families who are actually working the farm, from students, you know, high school kids from far away, you know, come to support, musicians and people in the arts who come to perform, do what they can to, wide cross section of civic leaders come to support the farm, from unions, from you know, the Korean workers union to teachers unions come down because they know how important this farm is to the city. There are thousands of people who are willing to stand up for the farm and where there's solidarity, there's hope. There's something very romantic about this story and it gives people a great sense of identification. Uh, people are on the side of the farmers because they feel if the farmers succeed, they too have a chance. They were, they were, they were very concerned about um, the Jewish community's um, interaction with the Hispanic community. You know, whether they're Hispanic or I'm Jewish or vice versa even enters into it. This has nothing to do with race or religion. This is an economic discussion. I purchased a piece of land and I have the right to do with what I want. The Trust for Public Land requested that they be given an option to purchase the land. And they were granted that in writing. They, they weren't going to raise 16 million or 5 million or 8 million. I mean, they had no money. A proposal for a full price, $16 million purchase was made by the Annenberg Foundation to the property owner. Maybe you, you have to be proficient in English a little bit too. You know, when I went out there, no, you could tell that these people were. Well, how do you know they were poor? Have you examined their financial statements? No. But you have, a, you have an awareness that these are poor people. You go out there, you have an awareness that, you know, these are illegal people. In most part, in most part. Now, they say, oh yeah, but the food bank was, you know, qualifying them. The food bank lost control. They had two years to get out. They weren't getting out. They weren't going to leave. You need to stand behind the what? line, sir. What? Sir, Tell you me. need to what? stand behind the line. Tell me why. I am not resisting you. I'm yes, you are. You why. I just told you, you need to stand why? behind the line. Why? why is that line there? You need to stand behind the line. Why? Sir. Can you bring lots of poster board, banners, paints, buggers? Anywhere, I'll pay you back. You contact the sheriffs over there in Long Beach and Martin Luther King. I have to go to Long Beach to ask him? Yes. The ship here, we just oh, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, leave him alone. Leave him alone. Stay the first. Currently attempting to ex extricate them from the con concrete drums uh, using a variety.
variety of power tools to accomplish this safely. I don't want to do anything. Put your hand. Hey, hey, over, turn over. Hey, stop it, man. All right? Relax. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Do not touch me. Do you have your credentials, sir? Do you have your credentials, sir? We'll, we'll direct you to the media location. Okay. I thank you for the polite explanation. No problem, sir. Okay. It's not like they were all just sitting there innocently farming. These people were planning, and they were planning, you know, what do they call it? Social disobedience. A pot and pan is all she had left. She, like the others, were put out. The pre-dawn raid by Los Angeles County Sheriff's deputies with power saws, blow torches, and bulldozers, deputies tore through the 14-acre urban farm and acted on a court order to evict settlers and protesters. We're trying to purchase the land. We, and we, we are being moved, but we also are still in negotiations, and we still have a court date in July. Actress Daryl Hannah and veteran tree squatter John Quigley hung on as long as they could, but then the fire department cherry picker plucked them out. Protesters were defiant until the very bitter end. I'm angry at a system that has allowed essentially the theft of $10 million from the people of Los Angeles. Only an unchallenged owner can order demolition. In other words, there can't be liens against the property, there can't be court questions. Then you can't push. All it is is a psychological advantage. It is not a real advantage. That's and true. if we present, we can have all this back in two weeks. Two weeks. Right. I agree with you, young man. Isn't <laughs> it? You know, they're trying to sustain themselves without the government's help. Pretty much, Jen Perry's going to have to step up for the farmers. This is actually be her time for redemption. This land is your land. This land is my land. The purpose of the vigils is, is twofold. On one level, you're reclaiming the land on the outside. We would invite people to come out so that people would say, okay, what are they doing? We had the helicopters going round and round and we were going around our space, protecting your space, saying that we the community, we want to keep the space. It's sacred for us. It's bare, it's really bare, you know. And that's hard. It's been one of the most difficult things to do. They did take some of the other trees 
um, they haven't taken it out because there is they haven't found a spot for it by law it has to be taken out so they don't want to take it out because it's so old and once you take it out you can't take it out anymore you can't move it again what more beautiful value than to teach your next generation your children that you too could grow your own food that's a, a very traditional knowledge that we're forgetting that skill because we're so used to opening the refrigerator the struggle uh, really changed people's perspective in terms of how land is used, in terms of um, the hunger issues that are faced in, in the city of LA alone. This organic stuff, when you eat it raw, it's sweet. Taste it. Yeah, you'll be honest to God, you'll be surprised. We're seeing this enormous rise in the number of urban gardens, farmers markets, uh, locally grown food is the hot new issue. Everyone is looking for ways to do that. What the people did at the South Central Farm, I think really has to have hundreds of those as community centers to make the planet work. I mean, for me, this is the defining green issue, I think, for the region for many years to come. We started a project in Fresno, and the land is on loan. And in the month of August 2006, we started doing what we used to do. We're proving that a community can grow their own food on the weekends and bring it back into their communities. I'm not proud. I didn't do anything that was so worth going around strutting about. You know, I just went about my business. That's my business. I'm a developer, and I do what I do. What is the price of land? What is the true price of land? But yet, do we see after a year, do we see that the land's being used? Fourteen years. Fourteen years of people working with the land and what could happen in any space when you take care of the land, be it through plants, flowers, in this case, food. And what more beautiful thing to leave your next generation. What more, what more beautiful than to leave the train? We were inside the farm, it was not that loud, but it had to do with the trees because you were protected and it created a real nice atmosphere. And when we were inside working, you couldn't hear the train as loud. Somehow it got louder now. So we're talking about bringing in, you know, 25 to 30 tons of food.